Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 6, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Prague, Czech Republic. AVTest.org came up with an interesting summary of malware that they have seen over 2016. Now, one of the headlines of the report is that ransomware was actually not all that big. Only about 1% of samples they analyzed were ransomware. But still, of course, ransomware is scrapping all the headlines in part probably. And that's also part of AVTest's report. Ransomware is more visible. You may be infected with a banking trojan for quite a while before you notice it. Or let's say a spyware, again, not very visible to the user by design. While if you are infected with a ransomware, then of course the ransomware will make itself known pretty quickly. And that's maybe why it sort of grabs the headline. Of course, it's also somewhat new that also contributes to the effect of it getting more mind share than it actually gets a share of infected systems. Lots of other interesting stats in this report and none of them really as surprising as the ransomware finding. For example, Windows malware is going somewhat down, still however by far the most common malware. As a part of percentage of all malware, Android and Mac OS is gaining some market share here, but still really not all that common. In particular, Mac OS, while the number of infections substantially increased, it's still well below what we see for Windows. And talking about Windows and malware, of course, Microsoft has put its hope on Windows 10 to protect users from malware. And some of the recent updates, like the famous creators update that I think was released in April adds additional protections. Microsoft will now make it more obvious for users to upgrade. If you haven't upgraded to the latest version of Windows 10 yet, you will soon see a warning screen asking you to update. Similar, uh, one of the updates also resolved some of the privacy concerns that people had with uh, Windows 10. So Microsoft will now prompt you and ask you to review your privacy settings to make sure that you have them configured according to the capabilities of the latest version of Windows 10. And it looks like the laptop ban for flights in to the US is not only not going to get expanded, but instead somewhat relaxed. Two airlines, Emirates and Turkish Airlines, both affected by the laptop ban so far announced that they are no longer subject to this ban and will be able to transport laptops in the cabin. So you will no longer have to check your laptop if you're flying with these airlines from previously blacklisted airports. And a large number of accounts at Bitcoin exchange Bitsum were compromised and cryptocurrencies were transferred from affected accounts. At this point, it isn't really clear how much money was lost here. Bitsum did declare that they will hold their customers harmless. Of course, uh, first they need to figure out how much money was exactly stolen from affected accounts. Bitsum is mostly a Korean company, so most of the affected users are Korean. And Ukrainian authorities did raid offices of accounting software provider ME Doc. This company was implicated in spreading the NoPetya variant of a ransomware recently and uh, has also been spreading malicious updates in the past. Now, this was always attributed to compromises of this company's systems. Not clear if Ukrainian authorities believe that wasn't the case, that it was more intentional. However, they also state that they detected additional malicious activity from the company's servers, which sort of prompted them to take action and seize affected servers. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.